Today I have a review of the Thrunite TT10, a tactical light using the Cree XHP 70.2 LED, a 21700 battery, and onboard micro USB charging. Thanks to Thrunite for sending this to me to take a look at. Let's dive in and see what it's all about. Thanks for watching this video. I wanted to also mention that I create written reviews for these lights as well. If you're interested, please check the description below for a link to my written review on my blog. So here is the packaging the light comes in. It's pretty standard through night fair, that brown cardboard box with the uh, through night name on it. On the edge, you get a picture of the light and on the other edge, you get a uh, cool white, neutral white indicator. Inside the light is housed, is protected with foam and in a plastic bag. And then you get the different accessories here. Starting off, you do get a micro USB charging cable. Who doesn't have uh, many of those anyways? You get a manual here. Thrunite does a nice job with the manual. Um, it comes in English and as well as a couple other languages. You get a warranty card here. Uh, it's a thank you. It lets you know how to contact them if you have any trouble. Then in this bag, here's all your accessories. You get a lanyard, a couple extra O-rings. You get an extra rear button switch. Um, it looks like a split ring and a extra charging port. And here is the uh, pouch that the light comes with. It is Velcro on top there. It fits pretty nice, pretty standard in what we've seen from a through night before. We get through night little uh, label there. You get a plastic D ring. I think this holster will be nice to carry the light in. If you are going to carry it, it does not come with a pocket clip. Um, so I think this is probably a good way to carry it. So the construction, the light is made from aluminum and anodized in a smooth semi-gloss black. If we start here at the rear, we see uh, we have two buttons. We have the large, taller button here. Primarily, this is turbo. This lets you lock on the light or works in momentary. And then we have this small uh, rectangular button here to do strobe. If we look, we've got place for lanyards here on either side, and these sit up fairly tall, so the light does tail stand pretty well. And you've got uh, flat spots cut in here to help you grip and rotate. The light only comes undone from the rear. Inside, you've got some fairly strong double springs in there. You've got double wall construction here on the uh, construction, and you've got some double wall springs in there at the other end too. Here's the battery that it comes with. It's a 5,000 milliamp hour uh, 21700, and you can see up the top there, it is flat top, pretty standard battery. There, in one place in this light, I can start to see through the wrapper to see what the base cell is, but it's just not enough for me to read it, and I didn't wanna take the wrapping off this one. The body has some rectangular uh, areas cut into it for grip, kind of like a frag design. All the corners are rounded off on it, so it doesn't really provide that much grip, especially if you've got gloves on or something like that. For a tactical light, that's a little bit disappointing and surprising. The head here has some anti-roll rings on it um, that does do a pretty good job, especially if you're in that button-up position. Um, it does a decent job of not trying to roll away. You've got the kind of standard through night button here we've seen before. It's a metal button with a hole in the middle. Uh, with an LED. And on this light, there is a small flash about every four to five seconds to kind of help you locate the light. On the back, you've got that micro USB recharging port. This is a nice design. It really sits flat, so it gets out of the way and stays in place well. All your labeling here is done on the back side too, other than just the through night and the model number. The rest of the head is pretty slim um, and just really minimal uh, heat sinking on there. If we look here at the top, we can see it's a pretty sharp crenulated bezel, and this does unscrew very, very easily, as you can see there. I'll screw it back down. The uh, lens, you can see, is double anti-reflective coated. The reflector underneath is an orange peel, and then you see that big Cree XHP 70.2 LED down the center. So I measured the overall length of the Thrunite TT10 at 138 millimeters. Diameter at its maximum in the head is 33 millimeters and minimum on the body at 27 millimeters and weight with the battery installed is 190 grams. The Olight Warrior X here is a similar flashlight. Um, it's using an 18650 battery, but it's that tactical roll as well. We can see it's got a lot bigger head, um, a bit slimmer body. It's got that magnetic recharging cap that Olight's famous for. Um, similar design in the body, kind of. Um, just similar flashlight, but it's not the best match for what I've got here. The best match I have for the Thrunite TT10 is the Claris XT21X. 
that I reviewed on my channel earlier this year. Um, they're running the same battery size, same LED, same tactical roll. It's got, they've, it's also got two buttons on the rear and is USB rechargeable. Only the Claris is uh, USB-C. The big difference between these two is overall length as you are seeing there. And uh, the head size is larger on the Claris and it throws a little bit further. It's designed more to throw. It's got a smooth reflector and a deeper reflector as well. And this one, uh, you can pocket carry with that clip. As I mentioned before, the uh, Thrunite is using a Cree XHP 70.2 70B bin LED. There is a neutral white version offered. Unfortunately, I have the cool white version here. That said, the cool white has a little bit of green tint to it, which almost makes me think it's a neutral white, but uh, I, I know it's not if I trust what the box says. We can kind of see beam profile here. It does have a hot center and fades to the fill decently well. You can see you've got a little bit of that donut shape on the edges where it transitions maybe to a little bit different color purple. That's pretty common for the XHP 70.2s. Through night lists the official specs at turbo at 3,700 lumens, stepping down to 1,100. High at 1,750, stepping down to 1,100. Medium at 300 lumens, low at 20 lumens, and Firefly at half a lumen. I will note that other reviewers have not been able to replicate these output numbers, and uh, actual results they saw were 20 to 30 percent less uh, when starting on the higher modes. And that's not common for Through Night. Typically, they have pretty good numbers that match their outputs. Um, and I'm in the process of building my own ring to test. Uh, so hopefully that'll be something we'll see here later this year. Mode spacing, I think, could be a little bit uh, better on this. It's a huge jump from 300 lumens on medium to 1750 on high. And once high is stepped down, that 1100 is, it's better. But I feel like there should be that additional mode in the middle there. Here is my night shot for the Thrunite TT10. And I've got it on the lowest mode here, which is Firefly half a lumen. And I'll bump up to low. Here's low at 28 lumens. And we can see this is a decent amount of light. It uh, throws to my fence, no problem. Bumping up to medium at 300 lumens. That's a pretty decent jump. Here is high at 1750. This is quite a few lumens. It drops down to 1100 here in about three minutes. Um, that's a huge jump from 300 lumens to 1750. And here is turbo, the full 3700. It drops down to 1100 here in a minute. We can see this is mostly a flood light. Um, it does throw some, but that's not its primary purpose here. It does a great job of lighting up the neighbor's backyard and just kind of reaches those trees. This is the cool white variant of that Cree XHP 70.2. For some comparison on the left here, I have the Claris XT21X that I compared um, earlier in the year. This is using the same LED, same size battery, um, similar use light, so it's very comparable. Um, I've got this on in the low mode. Here's low mode 100 lumens on the left here, and then this is the through night on similar uh, 28 lumens. So on the left here is the Claris at full 4,000 lumens in turbo mode. This Claris throws just a little bit uh, better. It's got a little bit deeper reflector. Same LED, same cool white. And we've got the through night here. Same LED, but we can see it's got a little shorter reflector. doesn't throw quite as well. Its tint is maybe a little bit more neutral, a little bit warmer, um, maybe slightly more green as well compared to the Claris here. We can see the Claris just more output um, we can see it on the fence here compared to the through nights. Uh, it's only 300 lumens stated. My guess is the uh, through night here just isn't making what it's rated for. I've read that on a few other reviews as well. Again, here is the Claris. Does a nice job of throwing. And here is the through night at 3700. Overall runtime in this light was just shy of 120 minutes. Turbo is a stepped time down after two minutes and takes about 30 seconds to complete going down from that 3,700 lumens to 1,100. It's a gradual smooth decline, so to your eye, you don't really notice that big drop. It's just so um, slow. That's a good thing given it's like 50% output drop. As the light reaches that 1,100 lumen mark, um, which is about 50% relative output, it operates here pretty consistently for 115 minutes before low voltage protection kicks in and shuts off the light. 
I measured the low voltage protection kick in at 3.095 volts and heat during my run times were about what I expected. Um, it got warm but not too hot. At one minute I saw 94 degrees Fahrenheit, five minutes I saw 107, and at 10 minutes I saw 111 Fahrenheit. So the UI in this light, for a, for a light with three switches, it really operates the front e-switch and then the two rear switches are for direct access to turbo and strobe. The front switch is fairly straightforward uh, and the manual does a good job of explaining it. From off, you long press, it gives you your moonlight mode. If you single press, you will turn it on. This starts off in the previously used mode, so I think this is low here. And I just long press again to go up in modes and it does cycle through. If you keep pressing, you just let off to where you want to go. Single press to turn off. You've got the big button in the rear, which acts as momentary. And you can see here, it's a little bit blinky. Momentary for me isn't the most steady. Um, it sometimes gets a little bit blinky, but I, if I lock on, it's just fine. And it doesn't, that does a good job of holding the battery around, but this is direct access to turbo. Um, and then the little square button on the back gives you your strobe. With the front button, you've only got access to low, medium, and high. To get turbo, you have to double click um, or triple click to go to strobe or use that uh, button on the rear. The light also has electronic lockout that the uh, manual goes into pretty well. As I said, the UI on the tail switch has direct access to turbo with the large button being your mechanical button. It also has access to strobe with the smaller rectangular button. There is no complete mechanical lockout on this light. If the light is on here and you unscrew the rear just a little bit, it does lock out the tail cap so the light shut off. However, I can still hit the button here and use the e-switch up front and do that double wall construction. And if I screw it back on there, the uh, mechanical switch on the rear, you can see is still on so the light comes back on. What would have been nice is to see through night offer a non-tactical mode for this light as well, similar to what Claris did with the X-T21X. I think that makes the light designed for a tactical role have a little bit wider spread appeal for non-tactical uses. Uh, recharging, I uh, mentioned that this light does have onboard micro USB charging here in the head. Um, pretty standard, that front small LED in the front gives you charging indication. Um, it goes red when charged and blue when completely charged. And the flap here does a nice job of fitting flush and getting out of the way. Charging speed was uh, good with this light and it stayed right at 1.96 amps for the duration of charging. And it's nice to see on such a large battery that overall charging from low voltage kick in to full was two point, or it was right at two hours and a full cell measured uh, four point one eight volts, so uh, good range. The pros for me are the side switch has that lo uh, locator function which blinks every four seconds to help you locate it in the dark. And it's pretty dim, which is nice. Some lights I find are just too bright when it has those. And I have not found a way to turn that off. I like that both cool white and neutral white are offered. Kudos to Thrunite for continuing to offer both on pretty much all their lights. And the UI here, despite being three switches on the light, isn't much different from standard through night. Um, if you already own through night lights, you'll catch on real quick. That said, it's a pretty basic UI. Um, they could have done more with this combination of switches. And the cons for me are, it's still rocking micro USB instead of USB-C for recharging. While the full two amp speed is nice to see, it's time for USB-C to be the standards for new lights in this price category in 2019. A con would be there's not a lot of grip on the body of this light for tactical uses. And uh, another con would be there's no non-technical UI modes you can switch the light into. My conclusion is the Thrunite TT10 is designed as a tactical light and that shows throughout with emphasis on shorter duration, high output. It's, I like its smaller size and fit in the hand here pretty well, but uh, I wish that grip was a little bit more aggressive, especially if you were to use it with gloves. It's nice that, to see a brand offer a tactical light within neutral white as well, since you do typically see a little bit of lumen drop. The UI here is not super well optimized for the additional buttons and it makes lockout kind of awkward. I do wish Through Night would have offered a way to switch the light to a non-tactical mode, so it'd be more dual purpose. And I find Through Night's name of this light to be a little bit confusing too, since there's, it's close to other TT models, but other TT models don't tend to be tactical. Uh, I think they could have chose a, num a new name that would have uh, meant more to the consumer. 
Through Night typically offers high value, and I feel like the price of this light is just a little bit high when it's compared to its peers at its current pricing. With the coupon though, it becomes a little bit better value, so make sure you check out my description or the product page on Amazon, and Through Night told me they would be running a sale on this light. As always guys, I thank you for watching these videos. Um, please give this a like, a thumbs up, and subscribe if you're not. Click on those links, help me out, and uh, take a look on this over on Amazon and make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss the next review.